Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations and we've got another fun project here. If you have subscribed already, love you, thank you. And if not, uh, consider doing it. We come at you twice a week, Mondays and Fridays for sure, with different uh, furniture, um, fix-ups and uh, painting, refinishing, different craft projects. Oh my goodness, thrift flips, whatever we're up to here in the shop. Today, we are actually going to be making over this glass panel cabinet door. So it's a big honkin' long one um, that came off of an old buffet, kind of the hutch top. Um, and as you can see, it was, it was huge. So just didn't work with what we were doing. And so we're going to make it over. Now this one has a, you can see here, this pattern. Sometimes this is just kind of, um, it looks etched, but it's actually something that you can just carefully scrape off. And I have done that on many pieces. This one is actually a physical groove into the glass. So not my favorite thing in the world, but it's staying. Can't get rid of it. So we're going to work with it. The first thing that we are going to have to be doing is removing all of this hardware. Now, usually, I mean, if we were doing this on an actual door. Ah, it's not going to be big enough. Um, we would have to fill this in. I'm just doing this as decor. All of this is going to get... That doesn't work either. I may have to be, I may have to be looking long and hard for little um, screwdriver ends that fit all this. This is the difference. This is, this is often one of the challenges with really like old furniture is that uh, they had sometimes weird screws or you're gonna find every screw used has a different, <laughs> different top. They all take a different uh, screwdriver setup because they just, they use whatever they had, right? And so it's like uh, six different screws, then that's what I use. We got it going down. But I'm gonna take all of this off. I'm not going to bother to wood fill these sections. We're gonna paint, we're gonna be doing distressing. I mean, it'll all be fine. At the top, and this is gonna be the bottom of our panel where the hinges were. At the top, we've got one little knob. I'm gonna be taking that off, but I am thinking that I may like having just a knob sitting up there, a little bit of a decorative element. So I'm not gonna fill in that hole because, yeah, I'm not gonna mind that. So here you can see I've got this knob here and so it's got a little nail and it's got a screw in the back. I'm gonna take that off and I may just look for kind of an interesting piece of hardware that I can put across there using that hole. So just to make it a little bit more interesting when we're finishing this. But our first step really is I'm gonna take all the hardware off. I'm gonna wash it down really well, all the wood. I'm not so, so worried about the glass yet. So I'm gonna wash all the wood down really well, let it dry, and then come back at you for the next step. Okay, this has been all cleaned off, and quite honestly, it was pretty grimy. There's a lot of um, oils and things. Uh, with some of these things, if they're, if they're kept in a kitchen or close to a kitchen, sometimes you get a lot of the, the little particles of food grease and things like that. So it definitely needed the cleaning. First step in the process is I just want to darken a lot of these edges. I'm going to be doing some distressing and as much as this is kind of a brown, I, I want it to be a little bit darker. So I am going to be taking Dark and Decrepit by DIY and I am just going to be putting one coat 
of this on the entire piece. So it just gives, first of all, a little bit of a tooth to the surface for the paint that I'm gonna be putting on next. This was kind of grimy. It's gonna be a little bit of a blocker. This, this product self seals, so it'll help me not um, distress back to the wood. So I'll get a little bit more of kind of this darker color coming through. And it just evens the tone out a little bit more. So I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna put one coat of this on, let it dry, and then I am going to put two coats of DIY beadboard. So we're going white um, because I want a nice neutral frame for what we're doing after that. So I'm going to do all my painting off screen. You've seen it before. So one coat of this, two coats of my beadboard, and then we'll be back for a little bit of the distressing. I just wanted to pop on quickly to talk a little bit about how sometimes plans change. I had planned on, I painted this with the Dark and Decrepit, I um, painted it with a coat of white, and then I saw a lot of bleed through coming through. In this case, bleed through meant that the piece, all the white started turning brown, which is kind of a good indication of, it probably came out of a house of smokers. Nicotine will do that and just turn all of your white brown. So. What it, what it did mean was I then put on um, a coating of Salvation Solution and it still looked kind of brown. I used white. So then I used a coat of Kills, which uh, the Bullseye Zinser primer, it's got shellac in it and it is still brown. So, I had originally wanted to paint it white, keep this a little bit bright, um, but I wanted to distress it back. I will not be able to distress this back if I paint it white because I can't afford to go back through any of these sealers. Does that make sense? So once you get this kind of bleed through, you you want to make sure that you don't do anything to disrupt the coats that you put on, the blockers. As soon as you would sand down through them, you open it up for that bleed through to be happening again. So here's my plan. I am going to try one more coat of my DIY white because I've got these sealers on, it should prevent it from turning brown. If it does turn brown, then I'm, I'm quitting at the two coats of sealer, um, and I will then paint it in bohemian blue. So that's the scoop. We're gonna try the white. If it looks pretty good, then I'll do two coats of the white. Um, even though we've got a coat of, we've got the DIY, we've got a coat of white, we've got two coats of sealer on there now. So we'll try for, um, one more coat of white, see if it is bleeding through. If it is, then I'm gonna go to a dark color because we will not see the bleed through. It's not really gonna discolor like a dark blue. If it is not, then we'll do white. So y'all get to guess and the next time you'll see it, you'll know what happened. But I just wanted to fill you in on some of the behind the scenes stuff because this is real. This is what happens. It just, some pieces are evil and this is an evil piece. <laughs> I'll see you shortly. Now that my coats of white paint are dry, it's just time to kind of clean up all of this mess. And all I do is I take an X-Acto knife and I just kind of put it on an angle against the glass and just lightly and easily scrape that paint free. Now, I do tend to do this before I seal any of this paint because it's easier before I inadvertently seal any of the paint onto the glass. So much, much easier to be able to get it off now, then go and seal the piece 
and then any of that sealer, if I happen to get it on the glass, cleans off easily too. Um, mostly, I'm going to be using wax, so it wipes off easily. But I don't want it to seal or to harden any of this paint. The paint just kind of scrapes off super easy, and um, quite honestly, it's as fast and a lot of times easier than trying to tape it all off. I mean, I get this is square and easy to tape, but um, I just find even when I tape, I end up having to do some scraping anyway. So, you know, you do what works for you. Before we move on to working on the glass, we just want to finish out our frame. So, because we had so much bleed through, I had to put the sealer in, there's no way I can distress back to that dark and decrepit without risking bleed through happening again. Um, and I don't wanna do that. So, I'm gonna distress it, or create a distress look in a slightly different way. I have a stamp pad loaded up with IOD ink. So, this is the black ink, it's permanent, and I am just going to kind of lightly run it across some of these surfaces. Now, if I just put it on the edge, I'm just getting on the edge. If I lean it forward a little bit more, then I'm getting some on the front, and I'm gonna kind of touch base on some of the that inside edge here and there as well. And let me just show you a close up. Can you see that black edging there? So I'm doing that before I sand the piece because the sanding will soften it out. So if I do happen to get it a little bit heavy in some spots, then I can kind of distress it away. I'm not looking at distressing, but I am looking at knocking off some of the high spots and just making this a little bit smoother. Um, but it's kind of a, a cheat, right? So. I get some of that darker distressed look without actually distressing it back to the wood. So really, it's good that that happened. Good that I had the bleed through. You got to see that I had to deal with that and you get to see um, how I still kind of achieve some of the look that I was after without the distressing. So, here's what's happening next. I am just going to take, this is um, a block, a sanding block that has no sand left on it. And I'm just going to take it across my piece, all those flat edges, just once, to kind of knock off just a little tiny, that's probably an awful noise on camera, so I'll stop that. But just to, to smooth it out, just to make it a little bit smoother, right? Just, just a, a touch, a feel to it. Then I'm gonna take my DIY clear wax and I am going to seal my frame. So I'm just gonna take my brush, I'm going to apply it on, I'm gonna take my clean cloth and I'm gonna wipe it off. And then that's done. And then I'm doing my Windex. Then I'm going to Windex, Windex my glass, especially the front, which is where I'm gonna be applying a transfer. So I want it nice and clean, help the transfer be able to stick. So those are the pieces that I'm going to do while I'm off camera, because you don't need to see me sand. Before I start to uh, put my transfers on, I just wanted to deal with this top. This is where the cabinet knob was. And you remember I said that I was leaving that because I wanted a little bit of something on the front to zhuzh it up. So what I did do was I looked through my stash. The little knob that was on it um, had kind of, you know, just a, a little flange on one side. But because I wasn't hanging this upright, I'm doing this sideways. I wanted a nice long picture. Um, it didn't look balanced, so I needed to replace it. What I did find, I had a big, huge, massive cabinet that I made my son and husband go to pick up. Um, and when they moved it here, they said they are never moving it again. So I removed all the doors, um, 
top and bottom off of it. It's now moved over and it holds all my DIY paint. And they're right. It, they, they've said that if I'm ever moving shop, that stays. They're not moving it again. It is like mammoth. It is so huge and big. But I kept all the hardware off of it. And so it did have these long kind of back plates and these little, little stick out kind of pieces, which is awesome. Now, of course, the screw didn't work because now I'm going through a much thicker door and you know, all the things, but it's already in this kind of aged, dark, kind of blacky, bronzy finish, which is just perfect. So all that I'm looking at doing is tightening this up on there and just so you know, that's not actually tight, but I don't have a screwdriver over here, of course. So I will be tightening that up, but I just wanted to have it there before I got started doing anything, um, just so that it's there for the look, right? So you can kind of see, oh, this is not easy to flip. See how that's going to look and just kind of balance it off because we're gonna have our flowers the weight down here along the bottom. So it just adds a little bit, um, a little bit of weight on the top to kind of balance off against that. So it seems like a small thing, but I think it's actually a big component of the design. It is a space for two tiny, tiny little nails that are gonna hold it in place. And um, I will look through my stash and, and deal with that. But the fun part, what we're looking at doing here is looking to add a transfer. And for this, I'm gonna use the Japonica transfer from, um, from IOD. You can see on the bottom, all of the loose kind of wildflower kind of look to it. I'm not gonna add the um, Japanese lady, the kind of geisha type lady. So I am going to be kind of Look how beautiful this is, right? So tons of options. We're not gonna be using her, so I will be cutting out around her and cutting out a bunch of these florals um, to go across because it's not as wide as my mirror, as my window is. And some of these are taller than my window. So I'm going to be cutting it apart to adjust it to the size. And the beauty of this is that it really does cut, cut apart really easily. So I'm gonna be able to make use of this flower that otherwise would be too tall. And we get to layer these. So I'm going to, I'm gonna start cutting it apart and then I'll come back at you when I've got a bunch of the pieces so that we can start doing our piecing and mixing and matching together so you see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about balancing things off. But I'm going to start with cutting her and saving her for another project and save all the pieces, right? I use all the pieces. I'm, I mix and match and I use them on all kinds of, of other projects. So you may have seen me pulling out a little file folder labeled transfers and that's all my little pieces stash and they're perfect on little pots and smaller projects. So no wastage. All right. Oh, there's a bird. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah. Bird. There's the little black and white bird at the top. We may, we'll see if we can work that baby in because I'm kind of digging the thought of the bird. Okay. I'm going to start cutting and then I'll be back at you. All right. It brought you down so that you can see kind of the rough layout that I'm going for. Now, Here's kind of the basic, some of the basic plans. I've got more than enough of these flowers once I start cutting off some of the bottom ends. But I've taken the biggest flower and I put it here on the right. Most, here's, here's the left-handed, right-handed thing. Uh, because more people are right-handed, it's actually going to look better on the wall with the biggest thing on the right versus on the left. But I've balanced it off with a similar flower, um, just slightly smaller proportion. But then to again, add more weight on this side, 
I'm using the bigger version of this flower that I have to balance it off. So I'm gonna give a little bit of height here. I'm gonna be dropping the height down a little bit as we go. So you can see that we kind of curve down and up, just again to make it a little bit more attractive. And the nice thing about the knob is it gives me an idea of kind of where my center is. So right in here, I'm gonna fill it with some of this greenery that's hanging off down of the end, if that all makes sense. And I've cut off all my black and white. I don't think I'm gonna have a place for the bird that's going to work, so um, perfect. It just goes to another project. And any of the leaves and things, I'm just putting off to the side in case I want to use some filler somewhere once I get these on. But the easiest way to go about this is to start with my, with my right and then with my left and start, start working toward my center point to be able to create a bit of balance. Now, for the transfers, they love glass, so they're going to attach to the glass super easy, which means when you go to lay them down, you better be pretty sure of where you want to put them because they're likely going to start sticking already. And I've got this one cut, so it's just going to fit. Right, and, and already, I haven't even started over here, and it's already unsticking itself. And the little plastic tool comes in the kit, right? So you just start rubbing. Because you're rubbing on glass, don't be overzealous. You don't want to be pushing too hard, but you're going to see that it starts detaching right away. As soon as the color looks less vibrant, it means it's already started to unstick. So you're going to be able to tell when it starts to do that, but you can easily just as well kind of pull the plastic up as you go and be able to see what's stuck down, what hasn't, if you're missing a little piece. then you can just kind of go back over it. Now, generally, if we do these on furniture, we seal over top of them. Because I'm doing this on glass, I cannot seal over top of it without making my clear glass go cloudy and not look as nice. I'm leaving the, the glass um, clear. You know, sometimes you, you might see me paint the back of the glass to give this a background. I want it clear, I want it light. Whatever wall it gets hung on, that's the color that you're going to see through the piece. So for this one, that's the look that I'm after, which means I cannot seal these. If you are refinishing this for yourself, then you know that. And it means just clean it with like a really lightly damp um, rag, okay, over the glass. But, but you, you're gonna have to avoid um, you know, heavy cleaners like Windex and those kinds of things because they will have an impact on the transfer itself. But quite honestly, I have um, a couple of these at home. I've had them for a couple of years. They still look great and uh, you know, I'm able to kind of clean the glass off, dust it off, no problem. And again, they're used for decor, not kitchen cabinets. <laughs> so it likely won't prove to be an issue. But you can see how nicely and easily that came off. Now, the one thing that I do like to do, even on the glass, is take a piece of that white backing and just burnish that transfer down. So just rubbing over it, making sure that it's all adhered really well. And even though I've got that, that groove going around all of my glass, you can already see how this starts to take away from it and it attaches onto it just fine. You just want to make sure that you get down into those grooves and make sure that your transfer is attached down into them, but it's cool. So I'm going to pop over onto this side and get that flower done and start cutting these down a little bit and bring you back in for some of the layout options as we start layering over top of things. Okay, so when it comes to some of this layout, you can see this flower just kind of curves right in around 
this flower. So one of the reasons that I put it there, go slightly down, and now I'm just looking for where a good edging is, good spot to cut it. The nice thing about the IOD is that we get these beautiful grid lines, right? They don't transfer with your piece, but it gives you a good spot to be able to try and line things up and cut them a little bit smoothly. So again, I want to make sure that I'm getting this down into place where I want before I start doing my transfer. Yeah, ooh, beauty. Okay, let me just do this side and then I'll rub them both the same. So we kind of have the same action happening where this flower um, kind of comes in and allows us to overlap a little bit in there. So maybe take it up just a tinch. So we're going to cut this off just along this line. So not very much of that. And again, tiny little piece that I do save. Alrighty. Okay, and this guy is going to pop in just roughly there. Yay, okay. So I'm gonna rub these on and then come back at you when we start looking at placement of some of these other pieces. These pieces, I've kind of cut down so that we're working sort of in along these lines. And then I'll see about little bits of filler because I still have sheets to be able to use. So let's leave this one right in about there. Do this one right in about there. Nope, oh, too late. It's on. That's where it's going. And this guy. Stem down. There-ish. Okay. So, I need to do this guy first because there's a piece of this one that's overlapping. We're gonna get him down. This nice big beautiful leaf over here but I think I just want to add here I just want to have a little bit more greenery happening here and just a little bit more kind of feel of it coming out over top and there White on white, couldn't find it. So here you can see I'm layering this leaf over top of some of my florals, just for, again, adding a little bit of depth rather than always having the leaves in the background. And it looks great over top of these things. Now, here. I'm just looking at the pieces that I have. Okay, so I have a little bit of a bloom there. 
have some happening up there that I'm going to want to cut those guys off. I'm just looking for this to fill in a little bit right in that area. it. I think that's it. So let me turn this around to show you. And this is our finished piece. Think about how great that's going to look hanging over top of a buffet, leaning on the top of a, 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 a little buffet, hanging over top of it, over uh, maybe a, a low entryway table, or even over a couch somewhere. This would look great in a hallway, just something nice and light, not too heavy. Um, and again, having, having the color of your wall peeking through. So don't be, don't be concerned about cutting apart your, your transfers, use them how you need to. Um, taking a look at using old doors in ways that maybe you might not have considered. So turning them into a picture like this, definitely an option. Hope you learned something along the way. Hope you look at some things a little bit differently. Let me know what you think. I'd definitely love to be able to hear from you. If you're looking for any of the paint or the, the transfers, the supplies that I used, available on queenbeecreationshome.com. And apart from that, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.